Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel and welcome to day 49 of the 100 day project. I think today's going to be a good one. We, um, what I'm talking about today is using up uh, vintage sewing patterns. And of course, uh, well, I didn't bring a, uh, an intact one, but I think we've all, um, we all know what, what the components are. There's the outer envelope. There are the inside directions with the, you know, sort of the best way to lay out the, the pattern pieces. You know, what is... Uh, Which, which way you have to turn the pattern pieces to make them work. Of course, there are the tissue parts. Now, this is obviously multiple patterns that I have here because some are black, some are blue. So we know that, okay, if somebody used this pattern piece, that's why it's all cut out. Some of the pattern pieces would will never have been used. So they, or depending on the, Oh, see, <laughs> obviously I haven't unfolded this. Looks like somebody extended it or reinforced it. Um, obviously, if it's a skirt or uh, pants, then the pieces are much bigger. So, of course, depending on what project it might, a person might tackle, that will depend on... Um, and you can also see, that'll depend on which piece, what size piece you pick. You can also hopefully see that there are different color, um, color variations. So all of those things can work in one's favor. So <coughs> basically, I'm going to show you a few things that I've already done with pattern pieces. Just to give you an idea, now again, this is way more than you get in one pattern. So even if you don't have a very big collection of vintage patterns, you certainly have a lot of material to work with. And uh, there are a lot of patterns out there in thrift stores. Um, I've seen prices from a low of 25 cents a pattern to you know, a couple bucks. So I guess how, however, whatever your budget or how desperate you are will dictate how much you're willing to pay. So these are some of the flaps. Um, and you can see that these typically are in pretty sad shape because of course they had the most wear and tear. I don't know if I put that tape on the other day or if that was there before. But, of course, we're not going to say no to um, using a little ruler, um, numbers, you know, there, there are prices and sizes. So, there's that. Oh, here's another um, instruction guide. Oh, and you can see quite a bit different style. I wonder, I don't think any of these were ever dated, to be honest. That would have been something smart for them to have done. Hey, this is the back of an envelope. And typically, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, depending on how the, um, on probably the maker of the pattern. Got another little ruler. Um... The pat th this text may be laid out in portrait style or landscape. And typically this is important because it helps the customer decide. By looking at the measurements, it helps you decide what size pattern you need. And then of course, how much fabric and lining and interfacing and all of that you need. They also recommend the type of fabric so you don't want to be buying, you know, the wrong size thing for the pattern that you are actually making something with. Okay, so those are some of the pieces. So let me show you, 
And these things are in kind of various stages of completion here. Um, I'll just take this off for a second. This was some, it, it was in with the patterns, the vintage patterns that I bought. These are obviously, this is obviously an embroidery transfer. I don't know why some of this has pink on it. Uh, whether somebody went over it, uh, I just don't know. Um, I don't think I... And, and it, again, it's not material to this. This really has nothing to do with, with what I'm talking about here because you don't have this and you're not going to have this in a pattern piece, but... Like, I don't know why the design is pink and why the color transferred to, to this. But because this is like a little windfall here, I um, intend to use it. But again, it probably doesn't affect you in any way. So, just put that aside for now. This is... And obviously, I did this a long time ago because I have no recollection of doing it. I thought it was a paper bag. You can see it's. I can put my whole arm in there. And maybe it was, but a heavier weight, like grocery bag style. So what I had done was co uh, collage pattern tissue onto this. And... Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but I can certainly see that there are multiple levels here. Um, I clearly chose a lot of text as well, because if you don't, then it just, you know, what is kind of what is the point of using it if you don't take advantage of the the uh, what you have in front of you. So, um, obviously, oh, and I did that inside and out. Then I, I imagine that I glued it and then zigzagged it just for extra stability. Now, this is really very stiff, so it's not, I mean, it, it's going to be very durable. Now, as I, as I was prepping, thing, and again, this isn't a, how to do a sewing journal or a homemaker's journal, but... Um, I guess since I'm here, I'll, I'll talk about it. This was the cover of some sort of a magazine, uh, not a magazine, but um, a booklet. And I just used it to make two pockets for the front and back cover. The reason I put this here is I didn't want to cover much of the front cover, but I do want to layer a few elements on there. So I'm basically just clipping it in place as a reminder. And elsewhere here, I have other elements that, you know, might make their way onto this cover, including this yo-yo. I always, to be honest, can I make a confession? I always thought yo-yos were kind of so, so very kitschy and old-timey uh, and quaint. But they're a cute way to use up little bits of fabric, although more than you think, because I have made a few myself. This happens to be a bought one. But, um, yeah, I, I kind of, I've acquired a taste for them. Let's just say that. Oh, okay, so uh, let's see if I have anything more to show you in here. I was just putzing around, gathering up some pages for, okay, yeah, I do have some things to show you. So this is obviously the back of, no, front of a pattern envelope. So I cut it out and just um, using washi tape, you know, stuck it down to this piece of, of uh, scrapbooking paper. 
and of course it would open out this way. I guess I should put another piece here. It would open out and be writing space. Then this is the back of another pattern envelope. It had a rip in it, so I just repaired it with some washi tape. Um, let's, okay, here is part of the envelope directions from one of them, as well as the, the flap from an envelope. So because it was mauve and I had some mauve rickrack, I just reinforced that as well. Now this, uh, I had a scrap of paper here somewhere. Okay, so the height is six and a quarter and the width is six and a quarter. So, you know, kind of a bunch of oddball pieces here. Um, I think this was, you know, this was, this might have been part of a drawer liner. Again, just another bit of the instructions. I might neaten that up because I had just torn it. Now this, let's see, do I have anything else? Well, okay, this is the back side, and I used another one of those um, label, no, flap scraps on there. I ran it over the edge of the paper. Here is, uh, again, oh, this would have been part of this. Again, just reinforcing some of the weakest edges. So this is something that, um, and of course, I, I did this a couple or a couple or three years ago. Don't remember whose video it was, but basically the idea was grab some tissue paper, layer it up. Now, can I tell how many pieces there are here? Maybe it's just double, or maybe two. I think there might be three pieces here, just to give it a wee bit more stability. So I made it, okay, how, how wide is this? Five, two, so is that about nine and a half? Three, six, nine, oh, closer to 12. <coughs> so basically, <coughs> I, um, the other day, I, <coughs> excuse me, I just inked it up. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it. <coughs> Sorry. But I did put it in here as a reminder that it's about the right size that it could be considered, um, you know, a signature page. Now, uh, in it by itself, I guess it, it ha there's some interest to it just as it is. But it also could be reinforced in some way. Um, <clears throat> you know, like maybe... <clears throat> oh, I'm so sorry, guys. <coughs> um, on the inside, especially since the print is upside down, you know, maybe gluing some plain paper on there would hate, well, help strengthen it, would also give a place to write. Um... I don't know. I have to think about that. One of the other things I've done, because I had folded it in quarters and it stayed that way for a long time. One of the things that I could also do and will do <clears throat> is sort of go over some of the other creases. Because, of course, we know that to get all this paper into a, the little pattern pouch, pattern envelope, uh, things get really, you know, folded like origami. So that is another possibility there. Okay, so there's that. This is another one of these, but clearly I sewed it better than this one. Like these corners are pretty, oh, can you even see? These corners are kind of really poorly done. Um... You know, so I think a person, I mean, it's fine and it'll do and I'm not going to sweat it too much, but it is possible to sew better than this, you know, 
obviously it's thin. It, you know, wants to slip. I guess it depends how sharp a needle a person is using and all of that. But this one was done better. And what I did here was, um, you know, create some little pockets and some side tucks. So this will probably get uh, decorated a little further. Again, this could be a signature page that sort of folds out like so. Don't know, you know, if it's going in this one or not. Um, I do have a second journal in the works here, and I'll show you some of the pages out of that. This, oh, see, in, in a video that I did quite a while ago, a few months ago, I showed a bunch of my little mini journals, and some of them had sewing uh, fabric, sewing tissue covers. So basically, what this is, is a few layers of the tissue paper with some batting or felt or something inside, and then obviously zigzagged to hold it all together. Now this is kind of a, a weird little size. Basically, you know, from the spine to the stitching is kind of two inches by, you know, again, stitching to stitching, about four inches. So it would be kind of a bit of a strange little thing. Um, <clears throat> so that's another possibility for what a person can do. It does, it does make it kind of, um, like, I mean, it, it's a cute little handful. It's soft because of the padding, and it would definitely be cute. Now, it is fairly bulky, even without any content, so, um, because I don't remember what I used inside. I suppose some of that craft uh, felt, <coughs> Those craft felt sheets that we can buy at the dollar store, you know, are almost paper thin. So that might be a better bet for reducing some bulk and still giving it a little bit of cush, but reducing some of the bulk. So I might have to try that again. Um, so just back before I show you what I have in this other journal in progress. Um, this was off the these images are off the dust jacket of an old sewing book i you can see that i used part of the that torn border off a flap um, some words off there this is some the back of some scrapbooking paper and this was just some kind of a lace trim uh, again from a um, um from a a book with a lot of sewing illustrations so I just I didn't really want to cover up these photos so I just you know pieced in something skinny there and this is a piece of card stock that um, I'm not sure where it came from I have a second one this size so I don't know if they were six by sixes or if I cut a 12 by 12 and a half. do not remember this is part of that book that I was telling you about, and it had this, this sort of lacy trim around. So once I backed it, and I just did it where necessary to cover up the text, this was the woman off the book. This is obviously some of the branding off the pattern piece, and I just kind of all, color-wise, it kind of all went together. So... Again, this is off pattern envelope, and I just pieced it together like that. This is obviously off a pattern envelope, and I just basically backed it on some old cardboard of some sort. So these pieces, you know, again, let's see, what do we have here for width? <clears throat> this is almost five inches wide and six inches tall, so... You know, this might end up being a flip out. It, I suppose it could also, okay, let's use this bigger. I'll show, oops, I'll show you what I have here. 
And I did this absolutely ages ago. This is one of the very first fabrics that I, oh, that's thread, that I uh, bought. I liked it because of the sewing motif. I thought it had a lot of possibilities because of the way it's sort of laid out as almost like in a grid pattern. What I did on here, and there's some padding underneath here, what I did was stitch along all these lines and it sort of gives it a quilted effect. I also, but I won't bother showing you because it doesn't really apply to what we're doing here today. I also uh, fussy cut these motifs and attached them to cards and zigzags around them. This fabric <laughs> is one that I still love. Color-wise, it kind of works with, you know, what's going on on the outside. But believe it or not, and I, and of course, this was back in the day when I was either very hopeful or very naive. I don't know which it was. I had curtain valances um, made for the three windows in the kitchen using this fabric. And it ran vertically, so it, it was it was nice. And it was the colors of the day. Of course, this would have, might have been the, well, I guess the 80s probably. Um, I doubled up the, the edge here so it's a little more reinforced. This looks like avocado dyed um, muslin. And what do I see underneath? I can see some lines, but I cannot tell what that is. And that's fine. By the time a person has finished, you know, sewing in the signatures and decorating, it's not going to matter. I think this is from an Artie Mays um, freebie. So that could be used there. This was an image of candle wicking. Oh, yeah, there's the, there's the other piece of cardstock that I cut out and glued to that cardstock. So that could be there. If you saw my... Uh, video on wallpaper. You probably saw me unroll this wallpaper border and of course love it and the colors are all kind of related. So I just cut uh, a couple of pieces off and I'm trying to flatten them out so those could be signature covers. This um, is a piece of cardboard that would have been both the packaging and the pattern for a kit so that uh, this could actually although it has a kind of a sharp crease a couple sharp creases in it this could almost be the writing board um, for the for the uh, for the journal itself okay so let's see what else I have this is an image out of the book that I said that it had a lot of old-timey and sewing-related uh, items. This is part of a pattern envelope. It was a little too wide. Didn't really want to cut off the, the edges, so I just folded along there to give me a reason to make a... Um, to add this little extension here. Now, in a thrift haul that you will not have seen yet, you'll see this before you see that. Um, <clears throat> you'll see that I scored a bunch of these um, petty point charts. So I just basically cut some down, and there were these handmade or traced. Uh, patterns that somebody was must have been a Christmas one because it, there's an antler there's a pattern for an antler there and some holly leaves so basically I just folded some of those pages oh, that's a cat fold some of these pattern pages to use as um, you know signature pages this again was just randomly um, torn off of the instructions. 
this is more of somebody talking about the supplies that are needed for probably for those I don't know, Christmas thing anyway because they're using jingle bells this is a free pamphlet on choosing uh, hand needles which is really interesting I have two of them so I'm keeping one just as a reference because um, I may know some of that, but I also probably have forgotten some of it. This is a cover off a leaflet that the Home Economist would have been providing free to, you know, farm uh, housewives in the 70s and 80s when these sorts of uh, positions were funded by the provincial uh, department, the provincial agriculture department, to do outreach. So there was a district home economist in these in these zone type offices, as well as district agriculturists, and they were there to provide free advice, courses, and and printed material to people who had questions about farming and or womanly arts like uh, canning and sewing and that sort of thing. So here, this is one of those backs of the envelope that is in landscape format again you know am i going to add a washi or something there or am i going to leave it authentic i don't know yet uh cross stitch pattern another thing out of that booklet and basically now you've seen it all oh so i was opening this up to see if yeah see this could work on a page maybe it becomes a side pocket or something that would look kind of cool there and the one last thing that I want to show you well I guess I'll show you a couple things I think this was part of a, an already maze freebie as well this is how it was printed on the page or maybe vice versa um, this is my cut edge. Yeah, so it was like this. So I intend to turn these little, these will be like booklet covers. So I just have to find some paper that will fit inside. That'll be another add on there. And this is the final thing I want to show you out of tissue paper. So basically it's another one of these little things. I guess I made three of them, but I chose to put, to make this one vertical. So this is part of a digital, this is out of that book, that's off a pattern piece. I, um, what do you call it, inked it. I added these papers inside. See, my intention would be, I didn't decorate the back, so this would get glued down, sorry, glued down to a page. <clears throat> or maybe in the smaller journal. This seems kind of lost on this page, to be honest. Um, glue the back down. This would open up. There's a space to write there. There's a bit of decoration there. Again, off a pattern envelope, a digital, and no, a scrapbooking thing and a digital. And then two more places to write another digital. So... Or, for that matter, it could be glued, uh, not glued, but uh, clipped to the side of, uh, yeah, maybe that makes more sense. Because it might be hard to write on this if it was, you know, hanging off the edge. Yeah, paper clip it on. And, um, yeah. So that is all for today, guys. I hope that you have seen just some of the possibilities that exist for using, um, you know, sewing patterns as a resource. And yeah, as if I need to refer to these journals again for something else, as, as I keep working, I will. I, um, again, part of that thrift haul was some rickrack, some piping, this bit of fabric, this seam binding, so I just, I let it soak over, no, for a few hours in some tea. So this too will somehow get added in here, I'm sure, at one point or another to some of this. 
But for now, that is all I wanted to show you today. So if you have sewing patterns that are just, you know, sitting in your in your stash somewhere, uh, maybe it's time to pull them out and begin exploiting the possibilities that exist. And don't forget to try some little mini book covers because they are too cute for words. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, as I said, this is day 48, so you know that tomorrow will be the halfway mark. I um, hope that, uh, that you're still finding interest and value here. I hope that you're seeing some new ideas and being reminded of some old ones, or maybe seeing and hearing my take on some old ideas. Anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.